Hey, it's Webs here with the second part of the cards that are rotating out soon that didn't get any support that are kind of a shame that they didn't. This time covering Skolomance as the set in question and we're going to probably start off with Star Student Sestella. This is one of those cards that would have been really annoying to play against if it was actually competitive, but because it is a legendary card, it is kind of hard to actually build a deck completely around it. Glide supports this card directly in theory because you could mill your opponent out of their hand by shuffling it back into their deck. But between those two cards alone, I really had kind of hoped for a non-aggro based Demon Hunter deck because at the time, I think the only Demon Hunter deck that people actively played was hyper aggro and that was always really annoying to play against. And for different individual archetypes to actually pop up with demon hunter but for some reason they always push the class down that route it would have been really cool to see some hand manipulation in hearthstone we did see later on some deck manipulation in warlock and hand manipulation seems to be something that would fit perfectly well in demon hunter especially because they draw so many cards and one of their key mechanics themselves is outcast which is based on their own hand and who knows, this might be one of those cards that I end up making a deck before it rotates out. It really just depends if I can think of something that would be really fun to try to do. And speaking of cards that I've been trying to make work in a deck, Blood Herald. This is a card that is both for Demon Hunter and Hunter. And there's one important thing that this card is missing, which is a, either a Demon Tag or a Beast Tag, or both. I know they don't usually do two tags on a card, but that could be a really neat idea to explore in the future, and that's probably why they didn't decide to put a tag on this, even though it looks like a Beast, which would have made it actually probably way better in something like Hunter. This was always a really neat idea, especially given the fact that Demon Hunter did see a bunch of token support, but people aren't including this in token Demon Hunter because it's too slow. If they lower the cost maybe by one, it might see some play here and there, but at the same time, even as a four cost card, I think it would be a little bit too slow. And especially because this ability isn't affected while it's in your deck. It has to be in your hand, which means it's just a brick until you can get it really big. This is the reason why it never really saw any play. And speaking of token generation, Cycle of Hatred is another one of those cards that is way too expensive for what it does. I get it. You get a 3-3 spirit for every minion that actually dies. But at the same time, it being a 7 cost card means it's really, really hard to use it against decks that would be spamming a bunch of minions because by the time that you could play a card like this it would be too late the artwork is really cool and i really like the artwork on the spirits that you actually get to summon besides actually generating this off of yoxeron or deck of lunacy this card never really actually saw a play groundskeeper is a druid card so this is one of those cards that i had hoped was going to make maybe resto druid into an actual thing in hearthstone but we didn't see it. It's a one-off card that heals for Druid, and it's really weird that until Boomkin, I don't think we've actually seen any other additional heal for Druid, even though it has a iconic healing spec in World of Warcraft. It's really weird to see a deck like that ever actually fully supported, especially because I don't think healing Druid has ever been a thing in Hearthstone's history. This card was always a little bit too slow, even though it wasn't that hard of a addition to actually fulfill. And now for the card that's probably one of my favorite this entire set, and the card that I always try to include in a deck, but it always backfires or is a little bit too slow, Potion of Illusion. This is one of those cards that is really good in some like OTK strategies where you can actually duplicate this card or make it cheaper. But at the same time, because it is a four cost card, it doesn't really ever see some play. And for good reasons, it's way too slow. And by the time that you would get this online with some of your big minions that you would want to duplicate, your opponent's probably going to want to kill them before you can actually use a card like this, unless you have ways to cheat out mana. And until very recently, there weren't that many good minions in mage you'd want to duplicate anyways which is probably the reason why this never saw too much play the next card on the list is ceremonial mall this is one of those cards that would be perfect in some type of big spell warrior deck or big spell paladin deck 
but for some reason they never really printed any cards to support a card like this and it really boggles my mind especially because the ones that they did print were just really really bad or anti-synergistic with a card like this i know commencement exists which is another shared card between the two classes which you could use and is probably the best target for this but when it comes to warrior in general too i think shield shatter is probably the only other target besides commencement that you'd actually want to run because on average you probably were going to get a like a 3-3 out of this instead of something really big and why run this over something else where you could get a even bigger minion on board such as the naru hammer that was a 6-6 and now it's time to talk about the three totem support that we actually saw in this set between trick totem totem goliath and runic carvings Trick Totem never saw play because the outcome is always probably going to be negative. Totem Goliath was in theory a really good target for Totemic Reflection. The issue with it is for some reason your opponent can actually kill both Goliaths that you buff up with Reflection. You're just going to get an entire board of basic Totems. Which means you can't actually do anything with any of them. Because Bloodlust actually rotated out with the core set. If Bloodlust was in the core set a card like this probably would have actually seen play, but because it didn't, it just doesn't. Runic Carvings is another one of those cards that in theory is really cool because it combines both treants and totems into one thing, but there's no direct support to support either of those later on in any sets, so it didn't see any play again. It's one of those cards that I scratched my head to try to figure it out. The only home that I could actually see this card actually fitting in is a deck that I covered really recently, which was Choose One Druid. But outside of this, Runic Carvings is just one of those cards that is a huge disappointment. It's too high cost of a card to have seen play, sadly, which is the problem with a lot of these cards. Archwitch Willow is another one of those cards that is anti-synergistic with the deck that you would want to include it in. Given some of the other support that big demon warlock actually got again similar to ebonlock in outlands it has the same exact issue it's anti-synergistic with cards like free emissions or some of the other cards that you would just want a bunch of demons it's a really cool minion that they try to buff up by lowering the cost by one to make this card actually ever see play which sucks because it's a really cool card on paper and in theory could actually have seen some play if the right demon got printed or the fact that it cost a little bit lower. Now let's talk about the keystone card of the set, Headmaster KT, who represents Spellburst at its peak form and is a card that I think saw a little bit of play when he first came out, but as time went on, he saw less and less play because he's just way too slow. He's one of those cards that I don't think would be a good thing to actually buff him up to be more consistent and the only way you could do it is by lowering his cost to maybe a three cost and his attack and hp which would make him a easy thing to actually play with some aoe but because he is a five cost card he's very awkward to try to use with any type of aoe unless you have some type of mana cheat which is the main issue with a card like this sorcerer's substitute is the next card on my list it's one of those cards that I think saw a little bit of play in early spell damage shaman decks and heritage mage but outside of those two decks I don't think this saw any competitive play at all and I don't think either of those decks were that strong uh, at least not strong because of a card like this. And speaking of heritage mage it was actually easily outclassed by another card that got printed a little bit later in the next set though you did have to run some secrets which wasn't the hardest thing to do for a deck like that anyways. This does also represent a mini theme that was actually introduced in this set, which is all the minions that actually do something where they summon an additional copy of themselves or give you additional copy in your hand or so on and so forth, which was a really cool idea. It's a shame that there was no legendary that went along with those cards, but at the same time, I don't know how you would have synergized them all together, especially because they were just a neutral theme. And now for the last card on my list, Keymaster Alpister. This is one of those cards that has a lot of potential to really screw over your opponent if they're a big combo deck, as you could copy their entire combo for a much cheaper cost, thus allowing you to do the combo a lot easier. Though it does suffer from the problem that is a high cost minion and is definitely one of those cards that is technically a neutral card but really 
is just a certain class card, aka Priest for this one in particular. And it's a cool little reference to Harry Potter, I'm pretty sure too, given its name. Though it might also be a NPC in the old Skullamance. I can't actually remember since I haven't done that in years. Much like the last video, if there are any cards that I actually missed that you think would have been cool to actually cover, or that didn't get enough support, before they actually rotate it out. Let me know down below. And if you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like. Comment and subscribe. And until next time. Bye bye.